Hey guys, today I'm going to go over how to get into a Windows 10 computer after you forget your password. So a friend came to me a few days ago and she forgot her password on her Windows 10 laptop. And being Windows 10, I thought it was going to be really hard to help her out. It really wasn't. It's actually really easy to get into a Windows 10 account after you forget your password. So I thought I'd make a quick video on it and outline how easy it is to actually get into Windows 10 laptop and ask help or get back into her account. So if you follow these tutorials, I'll show you how quick and easy it is to do. Okay, here's our friend trying to log into her computer. Our friend is named Cortana and she can't log in. She forgot her password. So just like my friend who came to me for help, Cortana didn't set a hint. There's no way she's going to remember. She keeps trying and trying and trying. It's even worse in my friend's case because she doesn't remember the username either. So it's really like no possible way of getting to this computer if you don't remember the hint. So what do you have to do? You know, find your techie friend, right? You. And ask you to help her break into her computer. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to help our friend get into her computer to get to her files. And it's surprisingly easy. We will need a Windows 10 CD. You get one off the Microsoft website with a 30-day trial. You can make a bootable ISO, a bootable USB from the ISO, or burn it to a CD, and boot off that CD. First thing you do is press any key to actually boot from the CD. It's the first option for the Windows installation CD. Okay, the first window the Windows 10 installation is going to bring us to is this window that asks for a language. We're not actually going to install it, so don't worry about that. So just go ahead and click Next. Click on repair your computer. It'll give us a set of options and we click on troubleshoot, advanced option. We really want that command prompt. We're going to bring up a DOS command prompt. Now you notice it's X drive there, source. Now this is the drive of the ISO or the USB or the CD you actually have. But we want to figure out which drive is our files on, which drive is our C drive on. So we do use the command disk part and then list volumes. We can make an educated guess based on like the size of the disk, we can make an educated guess to see which drive is our um, C drive, where our files are at. Most likely it's gonna be the largest one. So in this case, I have a 31 gig drive. That's my largest drive. So my files, my C drive is really listed here as D. Okay, so that's an important to note because later on we're, we're gonna issue commands and we have to know which drive to issue it on. So in my case, I'm listing D. But in some cases, it can be C as well, or E. So really, you got to figure out which is your drive. So we're going to do a move. These are DOS commands. We won't be able to actually go into the G drive and browse around, but we can actually move a file in the D drive. So even this level doesn't give us access to move, or I'm sorry, to go into the D drive directory. But we can actually issue this command and move a file, which is kind of scary. So, so we're going to move a Windows System 32 file, Utilman. And we're just going to copy it to another location. So we're just going to move it to another location and we're going to put it back afterwards. So we're moving this util man is utility that's used at the login screen. So that's why we're using this. And we're going to replace this utility with a command prompt. So and when I want to press this little icon on the login screen, instead of bringing up this utility, it's going to bring up a DOS command prompt. So now we're going to copy cmd.exe. So if you know anything about Windows, that is the Windows command prompt, the DOS prompt. So I'm going to move the command prompt to cmd, copy the command prompt, and then we'll put it where that utilman.exe file was. So see how easy that is? We're going to do this copy. We just need to get the path right, the drive right, and we're going to go ahead and do that. See how it says one file copied, one file moved. These are successful commands. That means it ran successfully. Now we're going to restart our computer and we're going to let it not boot from the CD anymore. Just restart it and restart it back. There's the command here, WPE util reboot to reboot from this command line. We're going to issue this reboot command and restart our computer and it'll bring us back to our login screen. So this is where it was. Notice that easy access button now, right? Never noticed that before. It's right next to networking and the power on your Windows 10 login screen. Now, if we click on that, it's going to bring up a DOS prompt. Now, this DOS prompt has actually um, admin access. To be able to do these commands I'm about to do, you have to have admin access. So all you do is restart your machine and click on that icon, and you're all ready to create yourself an admin account um, on this computer, on the command prompt. So we're going to do um, a couple more DOS commands, very simple ones. 
net user full access slash add. Now full access is the name of my user, so don't think it's part of the command. You can do net user admin two slash add, you know, net user temp account slash add. Any of these commands will work. So here we go, here's our DOS prompt, net user full access. And then we're gonna add this user to the administrator group. So every computer, every Windows computer has a local group called administrators, plural with an S, administrators. And that group has full access to the system. It's your admin account. So you notice how it says the command completed successfully. So we created ourselves an account without ever actually logging into this computer. So now we're gonna add ourselves into the administrators group, making this account a full access admin account. And from there, we're gonna be able to log into this computer, go into control panel and reset our friend's um, account password. Super easy. I was actually very surprised how easy this was. I wonder if Microsoft is gonna do something to fix this shortly. So net local group administrators, notice the as full access, the user we just created, slash add. So we're adding our user to the group. So again, this command is returned successfully. We're going to restart our computer once again. And this time we'll see that the administrator account will be there, the one we just created, full access. So it will give us an option now to use that account to log in. Uh, if you notice right here, it says full access on the bottom on restart. We didn't set a password, so just click on it. It'll log you right in. Once you're in, again, full access to this account, full admin account. So again, it'll take a second to log in. Okay, now that we're logged in with our full access admin account, we're going to right click on Windows button, and we're going to click on Control Panel. This will give us the options to control user account. It takes us to the full control panel of the system. We can modify anything with this account, including users or other users' passwords. So we click on user account and then accounts, user accounts again. And then we're going to say change or manage another account. Now you can see our friend's account there, Cortana. I'm going to say change password. And we're going to go ahead and set a brand new password. It doesn't really matter that we don't know her old password since we are using an admin account to do this. So we click change password, and now we can go ahead and log off this account and try our friend's account. Let's give it a go. So we're gonna set the brand new password I just set with my full access account. Notice it's gonna go ahead and log me in right away. The last thing to do is a little cleanup of the files we moved around. I mean, technically you can leave it as it won't harm anything, but anyone that knows about that easy access button in the corner will go ahead and take advantage of that. So we go back to our C drive here. We're just gonna move the files around that we modified to begin with. This file does have special permissions, so it might, it's gonna give you some write errors because it doesn't want anyone messing with the system files. So it's C drive, Windows, System32. You go back to that util man, you know that's the command prompt. So let's rename that. We didn't move the command prompt, so that command is still there where it was, so you could still bring up the DOS command. Um, but let's go ahead, we're gonna try to rename this. Notice you will get a warning here. It doesn't want you to rename it, so you have to go ahead and force it. And then we're going to try to bring back our utilman.exe.back. So that's our backup. And again, so you're going to say permission denied. Usually the easiest thing to do is a little workaround where you copy it to your desktop. Modify the name here. So I'm going to remove that file extension BAK or .BAK. And I'm just going to copy it back to that directory. It's just a really quick workaround around that permission issue. So we have all the files originally where they were, and I'll leave that back up there. Now we're all done. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you guys do a different method to be able to gain back access on a Windows 10 machine, leave it how you do it in the comments below. I'm just curious what are some of the other techniques that people are using out there. Other than that, I will see you guys next time, and subscribe to get updates. Bye, guys.